Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I'm doing a VR to Rose Honey Ritual uh, for their tag Tier Ranking Tarot. So um, if you've ever seen those tier ranker things where people will, uh, you know, put things in S tier, A, B, C, like give things a rank, um, usually for things like, I don't know, Smash Brothers characters or whatever. <laughs> um, it's like that, but you're doing it with tarot decks. Um, and the really cool thing about this and the part, the reason that I really want to do this is because rather than uh, comparing the entirety of the deck and ranking certain decks on the whole as S tier, A tier, whatever, you are, you shuffle through the deck and you pull a single card and basically you judge the entire deck on that card. <laughs> or, you know, you, you, your rankings are entirely determined by that one card. And I think that's just a lot more, a lot more fun, a lot more interesting because it's kind of hard to compare an entire deck and limiting it just to one random card. I think it's just more fun. It's kind of hilarious. And, um, I guess it just, it feels a little less serious. It feels less like, oh, I have to determine the fate and the placement of this entire deck, you know? Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do. I have selected all of my animal decks. Uh, I have 19 animal decks, which is, is by far the largest category in my collection, comprising about 40% of my tarot collection. Um, we're going to go through them one at a time, shuffle them, pull out a random card, and judge the entire deck or, you know, put, place them in a ranking based on that one card. Um, so in between, I'll uh, put up this image, and these are my tiers. The tiers, um, I decided to rename them. Rose Honey Ritual came up with some great names, but I wanted to do my own just because I can. <laughs> and uh, the names that I came up with are, are the, the, the official titles for the ranks. Top rank is Holy Fuck Hot Damn, which is, I mean, all of these are pretty self-explanatory, but that is the top rank. Second rank is Solid, Stunning, Handsome. Third rank is, well, they can't all be winners, basically like the mediocre rank. Four it is, hmm, why do I have this deck again? <laughs> like, this card probably isn't the best representation of this deck. And then the last one is, uh, why did this ha card have to show up? Because I'm sure for some of these there will be cards that I just, like, I'm just really not a fan of. <laughs> and I overlook them because of the deck's many other great qualities. So if one of them happens to come up, it's kind of like, ugh. Why this card deck? Why why is this card <laughs> representing the entire deck? So anyway, um, let's just get started. I'm going in alphabetical-ish order here, and we're going to start with the Animalis Os Fortuna tarot deck, which I have been really enjoying lately. Come on. And you can kind of see what it looks like. It's black and white. It's animals. It's got cool bones and skulls and things in them, and I just really like it. Probably won't talk too much about the decks on the whole, because that is not the point of this video, and that would take forever. So I'm just going to kind of give them, give them a little shuffle until we decide. All right, <laughs> the Two of Pentacles and we've got this little rat here, which I love. Um, what I really like about uh, this card in this deck, and as this exemplifies, is that it's in like a natural scene um, that, despite being highly stylized, it seems decently realistic, and the composition just feels very, very realistic. Like you're actually setting a camera down on the ground and looking at this little rat. <laughs> I love rats too. Um, I'm You're the Rat, and I just, I just have always liked them. Um, I, I think this is pretty darn solid. Um, the only thing that uh, bugs me a little bit, I guess, about this card is that the, uh, Pentacles they're just, the lines are a little thick, and I get that they're supposed to be kind of carved onto the rock, but it just looks a little bit awkward the way they, the way they did that. Um, but, um, I do like the sort of curiosity implied by the rat of, of sort of, like, 
scuttling around and peering around the rock like, oh, what's over there? I think it's sort of, yeah, I think the rat is kind of a good choice for balance of, of balancing um, fear and confidence um, as sort of both a uh, prey animal and what humans often think of as a scary animal. So I like it. But yeah, so overall, I'm going to put it in solid, stunning, handsome. Okay. I'm going to try to stay relatively clean and organized while I'm doing this. All right, next deck is the Animal and Food Tarot Card Deck um, by Maruko Studios or Maruko Art. Um, it's a, I want to say, Taiwanese creator or from Taiwan. I'm not... You know what? I probably shouldn't even have tried to guess, <laughs> but it is so cute. And um, basically, here's kind of what the deck looks like, where it's got a bunch of really cute animals in in making food, eating food, around food, lots of sweets. It's got this little gold gilding on it, and it's just super adorable, such a pick-me-up. Really, I really like it. So, let's see what card you have to show us today, animal and food. I hope that this video doesn't turn into like 90% shuffling, but it kind of might do that. So, we're going to do this one. Okay, the Hanged Man. So, I kind of like this one. It's not my favorite card in the deck. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with it. It is really cute. Um, I like the idea of the sloth representing the hanged man as kind of a, you know, slowness and taking a moment out. And the hang the the sloth really doesn't have a choice in its it's the speed of its life, you know. Um, and I think it, it's a good one to represent the sort of slowness that leads to illumination and contemplation. The food choice of the bread basket, I think... I That's one of those things where I feel like I kind of have to come up with a meaning for it. Um, like, the, the, the guidebook for this is basically just like a little mini-zine, and it has an explanation for all of the majors and some, like, a selection of the minors. Um, most of them are relatively self-explanatory, so don't really use it very much, but let's just see if it says why the hanged man is like this. The animal that the hanged man makes me think of is the sloth. The sloths are almost always hanging from the trees and are very slow and calm. I let the sloth hang down a hand as if welcoming everyone to enjoy the basket of bread. So I guess it's sort of, like, meant as a presentation, um for other people and bread is it's very homey and it's very um comforting and it's just such a staple food that you know I kind of I kind of get it but it's also not like the greatest representation of the hanged man for me like the animal choice is good but you know I guess it's just it's not my favorite card in the deck I think that <laughs> like I think that the sloth looks just goofy as fuck in these little like he looks like a little German boy. <laughs> like... Oh my god. Okay. So I'm going to put this one in... Well, they can't all be winners, because I think that there are a lot better cards that I like better in in this deck. <laughs> so that, that pretty much sums up my feelings on it. Alright, that was the Animal and Food Tarot Card deck. Next up we have... The Animism Tarot. I'm really excited because uh, there's, uh, there's a new edition out of this to celebrate. I think it's 10th anniversary. And it's borderless and it's integrated the titles and it just looks really, really pretty. But right now this one is the, the older bordered edition. And I like this one a lot too. So um, it's just at some point I'd kind of like to have both just just kind of because. Um, but yeah, this is a very, very pretty, lots of different animals, animal deck. And I've used it a lot. 
so let's let's see who wants to come out and play today. The Three of Cups. <laughs> yep, um, very celebratory looking. Um, <laughs> okay, all right. Um, dolphins are not my favorite animal in the world, and it's just, I couldn't tell you why, but it's just because I always compare them to other whales in my mind, and I just am like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Like, I I just vastly prefer baleen whales to toothed whales, um, honestly. And and so, you know, dolphins are fine, but I've never been like, ooh, a dolphin, or it's never been especially special to me. Um, you know, it's good. I feel like if I were choosing whether or not to buy this deck based on this one card, I don't know that I would. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. It's well composed. It's it's pretty, and the meaning makes sense. But I guess um, it's just like a little boring for me. <laughs> I'm gonna put this one in. Um, I don't know. This might be a little harsh, but whatever. I'm gonna put this in. Why do I have this deck again? <laughs> just because this card does not really excite me very much um yeah and I know and again like there are a lot of other cards like just <laughs> the one that I flipped over the death card love this one it's so cool and there are other um I really love the six of cups card so there are other ones that I'd be like wow I really love this card and this one just isn't one of them and if I have to remember oh yeah there are other reasons I like this deck then I think putting it in Hmm, why do I have this deck again? <laughs> Is probably the most appropriate. Sorry, dolphins. It's not your fault. Uh, alrighty. So we got that one back. Alright. The next one I have is the Blind the Sun Illustrated Tarot. And this one is not purely an animal deck. There are a few humans in it. I mean, humans are animals, but you know what I mean. Um, there are a few humans. But th I feel like there are enough animals that I feel justified in including it in the category of animal decks. Oh, I forgot to do the little... Um, here's kind of what it looks like. And you see what I mean. It's like, on the inside, it's vast majority animals. It's hand-drawn, black and white... Um, very inky, and I really like it. Inky, markery, sort of zany. All right. I don't mind a riffle shuffle. I just feel like it would probably take too long and get kind of messy. Whereas I wanna, I wanna just do a quick, quick pull for each one. Oh, the Three of Swords. This Three of Swords, I love this one so much. You can probably guess that I'm I'm almost certainly putting this in holy fuck hot damn. Because I just really love this card. It's so striking and that's so appropriate for the for the Three of Swords. I mean the Three of Swords has always been a super striking card. Um and it's just and it's got a rat, of course, which is one of my favorite animals, and just this rat in particular, just it's so it's pretty, but also punky and <laughs> I just I relate to this rat and this I one thing I really like about this too is that um there are other cards where the animals are definitely showing a little more emotion or the figures are showing more emotion and this rat just looks pretty normal except for the swords stabbed into it like it's on the face if you just sort of covered this part up it doesn't necessarily look automatically like a Three of Swords kind of card. It doesn't look super depressing or whatever. And then you get this. And I guess just this idea of the... I don't know. Having, having these spiked hackles up on the back. And, and this very stoic reaction. And it, because of generally having these, uh, these shields up all the time. And almost like the heart is acting as a shield on the rat. Like, like protecting its true core by, you know... 
suppressing the emotion. I, uh, I'm going. I'm just going all over the place on this one. But uh, the point is that I just really like the depiction of this one. I like the sort of stoic expression almost, and it's like just it just feels so much like they're just so used to living with this, to living with with pain and living with heartache and um whatever that they've learned to they've learned to hide or control their emotions or or wait until they can get back to their little rat den rat nest and um and experience them more fully and and I think just because someone doesn't outwardly show a lot of emotions outwardly show a lot of grief that doesn't mean that they don't experience things very deeply and that they that they don't experience sadness and I've had I've had comments on the on that from my family members because a lot of my other family members are a little more uh I guess um I don't have a single word to sum up but the point is they don't they don't mind showing their emotions including sadness and bad ones and it's not that I don't it's not that I'm afraid of people noticing that I'm sad necessarily but I'm definitely used to trying not to take up space and that's what this rat feels like to me and Ah, oh, shit. I just really love this one. <laughs> so, obviously. Holy fuck, hot damn. That's where this Three of Swords is going. Man, that's seriously, like, like the best one in this whole... Or my favorite... One of my favorite cards in the whole deck. Okay, next up, we've got the Bohemian Animal Tarot. And this one, it's these cool oil pastel images they're anthropomorphic and they're it's Rider Waite Smithy but they have some of them that are just completely different like this judgment card has almost nothing no shared um imagery or composition or anything like you'd expect from Rider Waite Smith and um so that's really interesting and I really love all the animal choices too I feel like the animals they chose are decently uh like a decent decently diverse animal choices and um the really cool thing is that the guidebook for this has a sort of a deeper explanation of some of the symbolism behind the animals so you're not really expected to recognize the animal right away or or know the symbolism or you know it doesn't you don't have to it, it'll sort of tell you more about the symbolism behind each animal and it sort of explains the choice for each one which is really all right well this one fell out queen of the air so that's the queen of swords pretty obviously um yeah i like the great horned owl i mean that's definitely we've got the whole owls as wisdom thing and the great horned owl is the one that's that i've seen most often used in, um, to represent wisdom. So I like that. I, I like the throne. I like this, this wing thing back here. Um, it's not like my favorite card in the deck, but the thing with this deck is I don't know that there are any individual cards that just blow me over image wise. The reason that I like this deck is because the images play well together and they and it, it gives a lot of um symbolism and just a lot to grab onto. Like I really love the um little moon phases here of sort of the I feel like that kind of speaks towards balanced decisions and sort of an awareness of of changes and awareness of development and it's not just about you know a black and white decision but it's what it's a decision that encompasses a lot of um wisdom and age and familiarity and and will be appropriate for all seasons i guess um i really like the two little owls up here as sort of like it reminds me of like the the little angel and the little devil sitting on your shoulder trying to <laughs> convince you to do one thing or the other like the two advisors representing the two different sides. I like that a lot. Um and I just really like the gaze that this owl has. This very you know, it's something that looks very serious and and looks kind of grumpy, but but 
Greater Horned Owls just look like that. <laughs> like, they just always look like this. Yeah, I'm gonna put this in Solid Stunning Handsome, because I think that there's a lot to grab onto, and it's pleasing enough to look at, and yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty solid. <laughs> solid Stunning Handsome. Okay. Next up, we have the Brady Tarot, which is such a neat, pretty, soft deck. Ugh, hang on a sec, I just gotta like rub it against my face. Is that weird? It's just like... Uh, it just it just has such a good smell and it's so soft and I just really like oh I gotta do this thing again okay um it's like lino cut and um probably watercolor for the coloring and it's oh, I love this one okay I mean a lot of you have probably seen this this deck before a lot of you have probably seen a lot of these decks before but. I don't know, just to just to give it slightly more of a chance to show what it's all about. I like doing this brief flip through just so we can all get acquainted. You can be like, okay, yeah, I know that deck. Or, oh, I haven't seen that one, but I get the idea. That's kind of the point of these little flip throughs at the beginning. And, okay, I think it wants to be one of these. Judgment. I don't know that I've ever really taken a good solid look at this Judgment card. Let's take a look at it. The Brady Tarot is definitely one of those decks that you you sort of have to look at it for a moment. You, it, it encourages you to slow down and actually see the entire scene. There's so much action and movement happening in all of them. This one, I mean, it's it's really neat, and the the composition is so cool. Um, basically, what seems to be happening, we have what looks to be either like a golden eagle. I'm gonna guess that's what it is without looking at the guidebook, and then some bats and a an arrowhead snake, maybe or maybe is that a rattlesnake? I don't think it's a rattlesnake, but you know, it's a North American snake. Um, we also have this little crocus popping out of the snow, and that's the symbol, I guess, that speaks the most to me. I, the, and of course, we we have all these bats sort of spiraling out of this cave that um, seems to imply a sort of freedom. I mean, the the thing is, like, this card is really interesting to look at. But in trying to interpret it, I'm kind of relying on my existing knowledge of the Judgment card. Like, I don't know that this makes a lot of sense to me if I just look at it as it is. And the one symbol that I can really grab onto the most is this crocus of, of popping out of the snow, which is sort of a, like an enduring hardship kind of thing, um, which I think can be an aspect of the Judgment card. Um, so I think I'm gonna put this one in, well, they can't all be winners, because aesthetically, it's really fucking cool, and I like these animals, I mean, I like all, I like almost all animals, apparently, except dolphins, <laughs> but I, I really, I like animals, and I like these animals, and so I think, yeah, it's just that the symbols don't make a lot of intuitive sense for me, and it's something that I'd have to get to know, and I'd have to read the guidebook a few times, and I'd have to, like, really thoroughly understand it um, for it to work for me. So that's gonna go in... Well, they can't all be winners. And I'll put this back. Yeah. Okay, and next up we have an oracle deck called Creature Secrets Animal Divination Cards. Um, this is one that 
I went back and forth on it for a long time where I just kept looking at it and it's just so weird that at some point I just had to get it. And they're, you know, different named animals and each one has a series of um, keywords on the, on, on the card. <laughs> Love lions. And this is what I mean, like this hyena is a good example of what I mean. It's like, it's just weird. Like it, it's, it looks weird and it looks a little, a little creepy, a little something. I don't know. So I just, I, so I had to get it. <laughs> and I don't even know that I use it that often, but it's just like, well, it's just, it's just really neat, right? I just gotta, gotta check it out. So let's see which animal wants to come out and play today. Who's going to do it? Step right up. Step right up. No pressure. No pressure. Like, check. No pressure except that you're representing your entire deck and all of your fellow animals. And look who decided to come and do it. We got two contenders, but I'll go for the one on top. Otter. And this is a really cute, um, really cute card. I like this one. Lutra Lutra. <laughs> Playfulness, glee, love, joy, wildest dreams, friendship, positivity, and happiness are the keywords on this card. And these two otters are incredibly cute. Um, definitely one of the less weird ones in the deck. This is probably the like one of the most normal. <laughs> um, yeah, I really love the way that this water was drawn. This sort of I don't know. It feels it's it's being part of it, but also being outside of it. It's letting things wash over you. I I do love all the keywords that they chose, um, and I love that there's two otters because otters are very friendly and otters are very social. And I just um, I've always kind of liked the otters as the lovers and just you know a pair of otters like. Like, it just makes sense. You need to have at least two. So I, I appreciate that a lot. And, um, yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and put this in solid, stunning, handsome, because that's, that's what it is. It's, it's really pretty. It's really cute. Um, it makes sense. And I'm, I'm happy to see it. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, Creature Secrets Animal Divination Cards in Solid Stunning Handsome. Okay. I gotta admit, though, I was almost hoping that one of the really, just really fucking weird cards would show up. <laughs> we'll have to do that another time. Alrighty, next up we have the Heart Spun Tarot, which is this cute little deck. Little, um poker sized cards and it's it is it's Rider weight smithy but it's it's just very cute it's very sweet I love the colors I love the animal choices where else are you gonna see a capuchin or badger you know like they they just had some really excellent animal choices I think in this deck and the creator is just I love the creator's other work too. I have a bunch of other little prints from from them that have nothing to do with these, but they're they're sort of um, uh, line, line of cut. Well, all right, we have one already. Oh, the high priestess tiger! <laughs> I do really love this tiger. Um, I love the white tiger. I have always had a soft spot for white tigers just um, because of this sort of, in the same way that I've always had a soft spot for black sheep, <laughs> of just being the one who's slightly different among your own kind. I've just always appreciated that. And I really, I love this little crystal ball thing. It's got just about everything you need in a... Uh, in a high priestess card to represent it. I really love how the um the tiger is lying down so that they're part way in front of these uh of this veil and part way behind it. You can see like the the back of the tiger is sort of behind uh the 
one of the pillars, which I just really like. Um, I just, I feel like it's so well composed to, like, for such a little card, you don't have a whole lot of room. Um, and it's so cool how you manage to have this very simple symbol. Like, it, it is just, there's no shading or detail or anything else on this moon symbol, but it doesn't need anything else, and it doesn't look slapped on. It still looks really well integrated. And I just... I really like it. It's a little goofy. I've always thought it's a little bit goofy to have animals interacting with the sort of human symbols. Um, but I don't know. I It just works here because it's, it's cute enough and it's sort of... It's like cartoony even though the animal is drawn semi-realistically. Like... Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna put this in holy fuck hot damn because this is just... It's such a good card. It's so pretty. It's... It's detailed, but it's not overly elaborate. It's easy to read. Great animal choice. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's I love it a lot. So, Heart Spun Tarot, based on this High Priestess, is going in holy fuck hot damn. Good job. Good job, deck. That was a good... And, you know, you saw that. of That High Priestess was just bouncing right out of there. <laughs> All right, this next deck is one that was made by a friend of a friend. So for all intents and purposes, it doesn't really exist because as far as I know, they aren't um, looking to do printings or put it up anywhere. Um, so I am very privileged to have a copy of this and I love it very much. Um, this is called the Howl Tarot um, and it is an all wolf tarot deck that is just really adorable. And one thing that I really like about all of this art is how the wolves have these little outlines around them to distinguish them from the background and just makes it, it just makes it pop a little and it just makes them really, it makes them really cute. Um, and I like it better than if they had used black lines. Um, oh, look at that nine of cups. Anyway, Really beautiful backgrounds, too, and and beautiful realistic wolves. Um, I like a good realistic animal. I mean, I like cartoony ones, too. I like both, but I just, you know, I like a good, solid animal, <laughs> if that makes any sense. All right, this one's sticking out, so we're just going to go with it. Oh, the Ace of Pentacles. Look at this one. Oh. <laughs> I love this playful little uh little wolf. I'm one thing that's so impressive about this deck is how each wolf manages to look so unique and have they all have slightly different patterns and they're all recognizable despite each being very realistic, which is just so cool. Um I love this pose. I love this you know, this is how a dog plays with things, and this is how a wolf plays with things, and this sort of, this, this curiosity and fun and playfulness, and, um, like, I just, it's so cute, and I like this background with the archway, um, I think that's a, gee, now I can't even remember what the Rider Waite Smith ace of pentacles looks like but whatever it's you know i think that's probably a, a callback in some way to a classic tarot symbolism the one thing about this card is that the pentacle is um actually i mean the pentacle is just it's it's a little bit bright compared to a lot of the other parts of the card but I guess that kind of makes sense, because when you're... The pentacle is... In, in the ace of pentacles, the pentacle is supposed to be the big main focus of the card, you know? Um, another thing that I like is there's sort of that old traditional tarot thing about the aces being the purest forms of their suit and being handed down from um, on high or just sort of being there and appearing. And so the idea is that you don't have... you. You don't have a character 
representing control of it or something or you don't have a character that's bringing it to you necessarily it's there's there's this idea of like this this distance from it because they exist outside of the realm of um outside of the realm of humans and so there's no one who can have a singular mastery like they're not i shouldn't say that there's there, it's not like there's there's a single being that is the caretaker of the pentacles in general who would hand you the ace um and that's sort of why you have this sort of disembodied angelic hands as like the in the Rider Waite Smith of like this idea of being handed down from heaven anyway what I kind of like about that is that they still have this wolf but it looks very much like the wolf just kind of found this in someone's yard and is playing with it as opposed to the wolf is bringing it to you the reader um and so I think it it sort of maintains that distance of like this element exists out in the world um yeah without just being a pentacle with uh nothing on it and no cute wolves. <laughs> so you know what? You know what? Now that I've really looked at it and I've I've talked it through, I think I'm going to put this in holy fuck hot damn. I was thinking about solid stunning handsome, but I think I really think that this is just so creatively done. It's well done. It's um, It's got traditional references, but it's not bound up by them. And it's just so, so damn cute, you know? <laughs> so, Howl Tarot. Holy fuck, hot damn. Really, really like it. All right, gotta put this one back. I gotta make a box for this one at some point. All right. We're about halfway, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, okay, ten more. <laughs> All right. Next one is a very weird one, which is the Mibramig Magical Tarot. And this is another one of those, I got it because it's weird decks. And you can see right away, like, yep, this is... Uh, this is pretty weird. <laughs> They're very, very exaggerated animals. Um, <laughs> and you want, like... Okay, the one thing about this deck... I like I like the weirdness. And that's kind of why I just had to get it. Because it's just weird and wild. But oh, one thing that's like... It's almost even pushing it for me is the backs... fucking backs and this is the star card like this this cat thing is what's represented on the star card and i really think that the star card is just the worst card on the deck like it's just so fucking out there and it's got this weird square headed cat with these big tits and it's like it's so weird um and of course of course that's the one that's on the back of the cards <laughs> But, you know, I got it because it's weird, so it's not like I am trying to be serious with it anyway, so it it makes me laugh whenever I even see the backs of it, so, you know, nothing wrong with that, I guess. I, <laughs> you know, I can accept it. I don't know what else I would have expected from this kind of, <laughs> from this deck. Okay, well... We're doing this one, I guess, because that's the, that's the one that was on top. Okay, so this is the Six of Wands. Have I been doing this in frame? Shit. Well, I'm not refilming it now, so hopefully I have. Okay, this is the Six of Wands, and on this is a, I'm gonna guess a Gemsbok. Um, actually, you know what? I might go ahead and look that up. I've kind of just been guessing on most of these, um, but Ungulits are kind of my Achilles heel when it comes to animal recognition, because they just, it's all based on what their horns look like, and, um, I just have never quite wrapped my head around it. Um, let's see. This little white book does not give the names of the animals. 
How did I not know that? Because I never read the read the book. Well, I'm just gonna say Gemsbok, and we'll uh, we'll just go with that. <laughs> the Gemsbok. I mean, I don't I don't think it's a Gemsbok actually. Now that I look at it, because it doesn't have that black pattern on its face. But whatever, it's some sort of ungulate. It's very Rider Waite Smith, um, which is fine. The horse that they chose looks really not happy, like, at all. <laughs> Which really doesn't make a lot of sense for the Six of Wands, I think. I mean, I guess you could say it's sort of the strain of battle, and and it's also just, like, a little bit creepy to have, a, you know, a quadruped riding another quadruped like the this is what this is one of those decks that has that weird thing that certain animal uh media has about like it has the anthro animals but it also has the quadrupedal animals and they're different why are they different how are they different and it's like oh well just just don't worry about it <laughs> and and that's a little weird you know what <sighs> okay uh, i might have to go with uh, why do I have this deck again like this one isn't this card isn't bad but there there's way better ones and I mean frankly though probably a lot of the cards I I would say is like why do I have this deck again <laughs> and it's like oh yeah I have it because there's certainly nothing else in the world like it <laughs> So I'll put it in. Why do I have this deck again? At least the Star Cat didn't didn't show up. Um, <laughs> because that definitely would have been a oh god, what the fuck moment. Why did, why, why this card? Why? <laughs> Alright, next we've got New Zealand Naturally. Which is another little poker-sized deck featuring entirely animals from New Zealand. And I got it just because I always like learning about new animals, and a lot of these animals I don't immediately recognize. So I just uh, was like, hey, why not? This is another one that I might have to pull out the little white. Well, up, ah, up! Ah! <laughs> okay. I was gonna say I might have to pull out the little white book to uh, recognize the animal, but I recognize that one. That looks like a sperm whale to me. Um, hopefully, but yeah, whatever. We'll just we'll call it a sperm whale, or if it's not, it's some other sort of uh, toothed whale with a big head. Uh, <laughs> so it's probably close enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's a good solid choice for the um for the king of cups or king king of waves in this one um the sort of lightness and going with the flow that these uh that whales have despite being these just fucking gigantic um <laughs> I mean, okay, this is going to sound like the most basic ass thing that I've ever said, but like have you do you ever like think about how fucking giant whales are? They're so so big. Like I mean, few people are going to get close enough to a whale to really experience just their sheer size and sheer muscle. But if you've ever seen like one of those whale skeletons at a um at a museum, Orcas are orcas are small. Orcas are very small whales, and other whales are just they're so fucking huge. I don't know why I got off on that. <laughs> anyway. I really like this little curly wave up here. Um I really love these clouds. I love these zigzaggy clouds. Um something about that just feels Actually, you know what it is? You know what it is? That kind of reminds me of um the sort of intense elements of water. And that's the thing is like, I like uh, doing astrological associations for the court cards and that would make the king of waves would be the fixed water sign or, you know, king of cups is the fixed water sign, which is Scorpio. And what's funny is that in tarot and in astrology, Scorpio and the king of cups 
are kind of seen in different lights, where the King of Cups seems to be this jovial but very stable and in-control figure, um, whereas Scorpio is kind of the opposite of that, of, like, they are dramatic and they lean into the, the, um, watery-ness, <laughs> I guess. Like, I don't know. So I just really like these little zigzags. I just think it, it, it has that sort of energy, energizing, you know, it's not just floating happily. It's not a jellyfish, you know, of just kind of floating and existing and being there. It's, it's very dramatic and it's, it's a presence and it, um, is just surrounded by so much water and just constantly. So, yeah, I just, I just think that's a really good choice and it's got just like a lot of little subtle, subtle things to indicate like the pointy waves and also the curly smoother waves and it just seems so at home, so happy in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in Solid Stunning Handsome. Which I kind of expected that a lot of uh, cards would end up in that category. Kind of makes sense. It's kind of like, it's like, of course they're going to be solid, stunning, handsome, because that's why I'm keeping the decks, you know? <laughs> Alrighty. Next up. Jesus Christ, how long is this video going to be? You know what? I'm not even going to look. I'm looking anyway. Oh, shit. Okay, hope you're ready for like a... Uh... 90 minute video here. <laughs> Feel free to take a break at any time. All right. Northern Animal Tarot is the next one. And this one is like this really, this is the first edition. It's this really cute, cartoony, anthro animals. There you go. I mean, gotta, gotta love it. I don't know why I'm splitting this for a riffle, but since I've already split them, I'll just do a little, like, side riffle like that. I can wrap my hounds around it to do a big riffle, and luckily these are bendable enough cards that I can do that um, without too much trouble. And they make, they, they have a really good riffle, these ones. Okay, I got, I got nervous for a second. I was like, is that the one? Is that the one? No, it's not the one. Gotta wait. You gotta get the one. Whew. Alrighty. That is a, uh, yep, that's a Eight of Pentacles. Um, the way that the miners are done in the Northern Animal Tarot is that they have, they each are a single animal, so all of the pentacles are rabbits, um, which I think kind of makes sense because rabbits are, you know, family oriented and they're, they're grounding, um, sort of have the Peter Rabbit idea. I mean, I guess the thing is, like, there's nothing wrong with this card, but it's just the Eight of Pentacles with a bunny instead of a person. So, like, whatever. <laughs> I guess I'll just put it in. They can't all be winners, because there are some that are just a little bit more impressive. The, the whole deck is very Rider Waite Smith based, but, you know... Some of the other ones just spark my excitement a lot more than that one. Okay, next up, we've got the Oak, Ash, and Thorn. Take out these two little ones. And you've probably seen this one, this gorgeous watercolor with gorgeous animals. You've seen this deck by now, and if you haven't, like, you can look up a walkthrough. <laughs> yeah. These cards are very thick, but they actually make for a really comfortable overhand shuffle. Some Sometimes overhand is sort of tricky with, with decks, but it, like, especially with just big blocky decks, but... This one just works really well anyway, for some reason. Alrighty, guys, come on out. Don't be shy. There you go. See, it's not so bad here on the table. I know that I'm going to be judging you, but that's okay. Oh, there's two. 
Um, I guess we'll go with the with that one. <laughs> Two of Pentacles. Okay. <laughs> um, this is like one of the ones that where I remember the guidebook entry for it a lot, and it's just a, it's sort of this idea of like motherhood as being a balancing act of trying to juggle caring for the baby bunnies, but also um, covering your own needs, um, which makes a lot of sense in the natural world. And I kind of like how how this particular card harkens to the natural world in that way, where some of these are basically just kind of Rider Waite Smithy, where, you know, they they are representing objects or scenes that wouldn't actually happen in the natural world. Like, um, like this one, for example, that that's not actually, it's beautiful, it's stunning, but it's not actually going to happen in the natural worlds. Um, you know, a, a crow being bound up with a blindfold and with daisy chains and whatever. Um, but this one is, is very natural. It's very, it's like, yeah, that would, <laughs> that would definitely happen of, you know, that happens quite frequently, actually. <laughs> a, a, a bunny with a bunch of baby bunnies. Um, I guess the thing is, like, you know, I guess, so I guess as far, as far as the, as far as the deck goes, this one's pretty good. And again, like, I think there are very few individual cards in this deck where I'm just, like, completely blown away, this completely stunning. Um, it really is just kind of about how they all work together very well, and... It's about setting a mood and setting a scene and sort of drawing you into the world in a way. Um, so I guess I'll just I'll just put this in solid. You know, it is solid, stunning, handsome. Oak, ash, and thorn. Okay. These cards are so soft. Like they're they're not rose petal-y at all. They're not that kind of soft, but they're just. So smooth. They're they're incredibly smooth in a, in a not a glossy way, which is I oh, just really like them. All right, this next one, um, it's called the Returning of Panthera Tarot, and apparently this was on Kickstarter uh, relatively recently. But this is, I guess, an earlier edition that was um, a Thailand only edition um, or something. But it's also, like, I, I don't really know the history of this deck, but <laughs> I do know that it has got some pretty fabulous animals on it. It's got my favorite animals, which are big cats, and each of these suits has a different type of big cat representing it. And it's got a whole suit for lions, and I love lions so much. They're my very favoritest animal in the whole wide world, so... Very happy to see it. And the really neat thing about this deck, probably none of these are going to be next to each other, so I won't really, really be able to show it off. But um, when you when you put actually here, no, so so when you put them next to each other uh, in a, in sequential order, then they do line up, and it becomes a very large panoramic scene, which is really cool. So check it out on a walkthrough or on kick, the Kickstarter images or something if you haven't seen it. All right. It is pretty cool to have the panoramics. The one issue, I guess, with panoramics like that is that you end up limiting a lot of the composition that you can do, and some of them, in order to make them fit, they just end up a little awkward. Ah, uh, but not this one. <laughs> oh... <sighs> Fuck, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, I really, really like the Six of Cups in general. Like, the Six of Cups is a very important card for me. And this one is just so jovial and so beautiful and so friendly um, that I just... Like, this is what I wanted out of my childhood, and what I didn't get a lot. And especially the association with tigers, it's like, I have a lot of very personal and kind of like hit or miss associations with tigers, and um, so that just kind of speaks to me 
a lot. Um, tigers were my mom's favorite animal, and she was Year of the Tiger, and um, I think I have a strained relationship with my mom, and so just the things that um, remind me of my mom are often difficult for me, but in this way it's just kind of like, well, you know, I was a rat, the <laughs> Year of the Rat, but I was also... I was also a tiger cub in that, you know, I was my mom's kid, whether I liked it or not. And so something about just this, this, these little tiger cubs experiencing that happiness, you know, it's like me and my sister experiencing that happiness. And like, I mean, this is, a, this is one of those things that's like all of these associations, all, all these um, associations I have are just like entirely personal and they're like probably the reason that I'm so affected by this is because of my own associations with tigers and my own associations with the, with the past and growing up and um, with the Six of Cups and whatever, but like because of all that, I just, I gotta put this in holy fuck, hot damn, like anytime that I think <laughs> pull up a card and it makes me cry like yeah that's a pretty that's pretty powerful <laughs> and honestly I didn't I didn't really expect that I mean I do really love big cats a lot but I kind of I did not I did not anticipate that um showing so next we have the tarot of the animal lords which is an anthropomorphic deck from Los Scarabeo in 2000 and uh, two or something like that and it's again it's a little bit weird it's a little wonky in some places and it's one of those human bodies animal heads anthros which I kind of like them um I didn't when I was a kid and it was because we had this like uh we had this picture that had this uh raven guy on it um from Alaska and it was it just freaked me out. Like, I was really scared by it. <laughs> I was really... S <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> He's coming back. <coughs> coming back from my childhood to haunt me. All right. <laughs> you think that I was scary then? I'll show you. <laughs> uh, I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind. All right, let's just get back to it. Let's just, let's see. Um, but over the years, I've kind of gotten sort of a strange um, appreciation and, and almost nostalgia and just, I don't know. I like the, the animal heads on human bodies thing now. We'll do that one. All righty. Yeah, th so this again is like another one where it's got the, you know, the one type of animal, the anthro animal, and then it's also got the horse or like the other animal on it. Um, yeah, I don't know if I really like this one. Like at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, but I do not like this card. This horse just, I get that it's kind of supposed to be, like, flying, but it looks like it's just walking or running. Like, it looks so clearly like they used a photo reference of a horse at a... I don't know, is that a trot or a canter? Um, fun fact, the difference between uh, the pace of horses uh, can be measured by how many of their hooves are off the ground at one time. So... Uh, trot means that they have two hooves off the ground at uh, at maximum. Uh, there are two hooves off the ground. A canter means there are three hooves off the ground, and a gallop means that all four hooves are off the ground at some point, and so they have all of their hooves underneath them, and they're basically like, it looks almost like they're jumping uh, because there's a moment where none of their hooves are on the ground. Anyway, so this one looks like maybe a trot, and it just... Um, it just looks awkward, <laughs> like, because it's in the middle of the air. And this tree back here just does not look like it has enough depth. And you can even see that there's, like, shading right here on the tree. So what, is its hoof on the tree? But isn't it also in front of this tree? Like, it just, the composition looks weird. Um, all of the cards have these little, like, inky splatters on them. 
And some of them are more distracting than others, and this one feels really distracting, of just, like, these big old color ink splatters. Um, and then, like, this flamingo for the Seven of Cups. I, like, I haven't even talked about what the card represents. Like, let me try and... What does this have to do with the Seven of Cups? And... I am trying not to think of it too heavily in Rider Waite Smith terms, but like. Seriously, like, what what is this about? Like, is it sort of supposed to be like a Knight of Cups, you know, following your heart's desire on a Pegasus thing? I don't really understand what the flamingo has to do with that. Um. Yeah, so you know what? I'm gonna have to put this in, like, why did this card have to show up? Because it's not a good card, and it doesn't represent some of the really interesting and beautiful cards. Like, look at this Two of Wands. Why couldn't that Two of Wands have shown up? It's so pretty, and I mean, it's just, like, so, it's so cute and so interesting, and this one just doesn't make any goddamn sense. Oh, jeez. Like, if I'm looking at this this one in particular, it's just making me feel like, oh god, why did I spend so much time and money trying to track down this out-of-print deck for this? <laughs> god. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Congratulations, Terror of the Animal Lords, you are the first one in this category. That is, you know, gotta be unique. <laughs> All right, next up I've got the Tarot of Pagan Cats. And I got this one kind of on impulse uh, after I had a reading done for me using this deck. Oh, shit, I forgot the uh, flip-through thing. And, you know, they are... They're cats. And what I like about this one is that they, in general, seem to be behaving in a very cat-like way. Like, even if they're in some situations that are not especially cat-like... They're behaving very much like a cat would in those situations. Um, like, I don't, anyway, well, I'll I'll quit flipping and we'll just uh, we'll just start shuffling instead. Ah, here we go. That's funny. Um, so I watched um, Pure Red Velvet. I think is the name of the channel, and uh, this is the card that came up when they were ranking uh, Tarot of Pagan Cats as well. Um, yeah, so this is the Queen of Swords, and I like it. I, I'm i kind of intrigued now by the butterflies, just, um, because butterflies are very, you know, a very clear and common symbol of, of transformation, and it's kind of interesting because that's not something that I would normally associate with the Queen of Swords. Um, but I think that them sort of swarming around the sword has... It sort of speaks to this transformative power of ideas. Um, which is that in in wielding the sword and in making those decisions, you are able to enact change. And that is really what... Um, what making these sorts of decisions, uh, these sword-like decisions, is about, which is really interesting. Um, I really like that a lot. I do love this cat. I think that it's a very beautiful, sleek cat. I've always liked a short-haired cat, um, because all my cats were short-haired. Well, not all of them, but most of my cats were short hairs. Um, I like the very long face. It's a li It looks a little awkward. You've also got this owl here, which frankly, I feel like it was just kind of thrown in. Like, oh yeah, swords, owl, that's a... That's an animal. You know, that's a sword-like animal. Um, but, yeah, I guess... The other thing I like is just the cat looks so in control. This cat very much does look like, yep, I could pick up this sword and kick your ass whenever I want to. I mean, not not literally, because these, again, like I said, these cats are doing cat-like things. But, you know, this this cat definitely looks like, you know, sure, you can pet me if you want to, and as long as I let you. And then as soon as I get sick of it, I'm going to bite you in the hand. Um, which I just really like. It just, they feel very in control and... 
yeah, I'm going to put this in solid, stunning, handsome, because that just seems to be the right place for it. Solid, stunning, uh, handsome. Okay. And I'll put this one back. We're on the home stretch here. We have three more. Oh my god. We can do it. We can make it through. Next up is another deck that I got because it's weird. <laughs> Which is the Tarot Cats by Anna Juan. And it is just another weird and wild deck. It's slightly smaller than average, um, which I kind of, I, ah, well, you know what? This one just flipped right out, so we're going to go with that one for the, for, you know, analyzing this deck. But anyway, um, just wanted to do the little uh, flip through first of some of the other cards. Like, it's weird. <laughs> and it's a little creepy sometimes. Um, I just... Again, I just thought like, well, this is, it's just, it's, it's intriguing and, and I like it. And I, I like a lot of the, uh, symbolism. I love the cat's eyes for the pentacles. So cool. Um, so I suppose you would call it evocative. Kind of a weird deck, but I've had some really good readings with it. So since this one just seems to want to jump out right away, we'll do the Knight of Wands. Um... I couldn't tell you why, but in this deck, the whole animal riding another animal thing doesn't bother me at all. Like, I don't even think about it. And maybe it's just because the art style is so weird and and kind of... kind of gothic creepy that, like, the mild creepiness that I get of an animal riding another animal is just overridden by by the rest of it, <laughs> of, like, this cat that looks incredibly cat-like, but then has these human feet, um, and just this expression, <laughs> this fucking expression. The expressions are, are so weird in this deck, and I really like it. Um, this knight does not seem especially knight of wands-ish. I mean, I would not say that any of the cards on this deck are exuberant in any way. Um, which, for any other card, really isn't a big deal. But for the Knight of Wands, it's a little like, hmm, alright. <laughs> like, he, he doesn't, this, this Knight of Wands doesn't exactly seem happy. I do kind of think it's interesting that the tail is, are entwined. The tail of the horse and the tail of the cat. Um, the bird is interesting too and just has the same scowl the teenage scowl I love I love that um yeah I'm gonna put this in well they can't all be winners which just because it doesn't scream knight of wands to me I mean it's obviously recognizable as the knight of wands but it doesn't really capture what the knight of wands means for me um, but it's certainly interesting. Like, the, the Knight of Wands, just go, going back to the astrology thing, like, Knight of Wands is Sagittarius, and I would not peg this as a Sagittarius. This cat looks like a Capricorn who has been forced into the role of a Sagittarius. <laughs> so, yeah, based on that, I'm gonna put it in. Well, they can't all be winners. All right, two more, two more. Can you feel it? We're almost there. All right, next up we've got the Wild Whiskers Oracle. Which, it's an oracle deck and it's got a different animal on each one with a little uh, title for it. So Frolicking Fox, for example, it has a few keywords and then it has a little um, message almost to the animal. So, for example, this Frolicking Fox says, Playful trickster of the forest, grant me the gifts of speed and stealth. All it's like, you, the reader, are talking to the animal. I like the majority of these. Um, so I guess what, what rank it'll be, it'll probably have to do with, like, personal opinions of the animal, as in whether it's one of my favorite animals or not. <laughs> Just to be perfectly upfront. The art is so cute. I really love the... Um, 
I love the way that the plants are are designed around it, and I really love the coloring style. I don't know what was used to color it. Maybe maybe pastel. Um, alrighty, we're gonna go with the bat because that was the one on top here. Brave bat. Perception, change, flexibility. Sacred messenger of the night, grant me courage to face the dark inside. And we have two bats here, um, which are pretty darn cute. Um, I don't mind, like, the, the brave bat, I don't, I don't mind that. I don't know that that's, like, the very first thing that comes to mind when I think of bats. Um, like, perception, change, and flexibility make sense. I don't know that I associate those with bravery. And I suppose you could say it's like, well, what is true bravery? But being able to face um, obstacles... Sacred Messenger of the Night, grant me the courage to face the dark inside. All right, and this is kind of like a personal thing, but I just don't really like this the the dark inside thing. I know what it's trying to get at of like your your shadow self and whatever, but like it feels kind of like emo edgy to me in a way that I just don't especially care for of like you know oh the darkness deep inside i must face it you know like i don't i don't know i just i'm going to say this is kind of a this is kind of a tricky one cuz i don't the title for my tier doesn't necessarily make sense for this but i'm going to say why do i have this deck again just cuz like i know why i have this deck but this just seems like one of those cards where I have it because the art is pretty, and the messages are fine and perfectly nice, um, but this is just one of those ones where it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, like whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in. Why do I have this deck again? Okay. Okay. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the one, the only... Dame Darcy, Witchy Cat Tarot. <laughs> I really love this deck a lot. It's one of my absolute favorites, and it's very convenient that it is at the end of the alphabet because it makes for a good closer, I think. Um, this one has a whole bunch of cats varying from anthro to excessively human to just regular cat quadrupeds, and um, there's just... I really... I really like this deck a lot. I love the Victorian... Well, shit. All right. All right. We're going to shuffle among these just because these ones really wanted to come out and play. All right. All right. Fine. God. Calm down. And we'll go with this Knight of Swords because it was on top. And funny enough, this kind of represents a lot of different things where it's got, you know, very, very human-like statue that is only vaguely noticeable as a cat. We have this very human-like cat here. We have this very quadrupedal cat, and we have this um, sort of in-between anthro cat up there. Now, um, this card, it's not like my absolute favorite in the deck. It's a little hard to interpret, I guess I'd put it, this card. I do really love this statue that they have of the sort of, like, like being carried forth by your ideas and your ideals to the point that you you just have to. You know, you're just, you're hanging on, and and that's become your life, and that's become your idea, and and just the, the way, um, like, one of my absolute favorite um, pieces of art is the uh, winged victory or the the Nike statue, uh, which I'll, I'll just pop up an image. Uh, it's just, and this reminds me so much of that, of just almost being carried away on the wind and carried away on your ideals and 
that portion for the Knight of Swords makes a lot of sense to me. Um, the rest of it, kind of surrounding the, the Knight of Swords, is a little, like, weird, where I don't think it necessarily adds very much. Um, I don't, like, I just don't, I don't entirely understand the, these, these figures here. This, like, smug pet lion that they have is hilarious. I don't get it for the Knight of Swords, but I love it. Um, yeah, um, I'm gonna put this one, I mean, this is tricky because it's sort of like comparing the art with the meaning of the card. Um, I'm gonna put this one in Ooh. I'm gonna put it in they can't all be winners <laughs> because there are so many good parts of this card but there's some confusing parts too and as much as I like it um and it reminds me of things that I like I think it just kind of there's so many cards in this deck that I just absolutely love there's look at this fucking ten of swords that's so freaking cool like, like, I love this one. This is definitely, this card is like a holy fuck card that, you know, for me, this one, it's just like, well, oh well, you know, there are some winners and this one isn't a winner for me. And so I'm going to put this one in, well, they can't all be winners. And with that, we are done. That is the complete tarot list. So I will uh, put the image up here and just go through to uh, remind us of how it turned out. In the holy fuck hot damn category, we have the behind the sun, or oh, Jesus, the blind the sun tarot. <laughs> Why is it that you always forget the names of like the, the decks that you use all the time? Is that just me? <laughs> like, I will absolutely remember, oh, the Returning of Panthera Tarot, which I don't use very often. I remember that absolutely perfectly. But then I'm like, oh, behind the sun, the, the sun was blinding the sun, like, whatever. And I use that deck, like, every fucking day. Anyway. All right, let's just, let's start this over. Da -da -da -da, official tier rank outcome listings in the... Actually, you know what? We're going to go from, from bottom to top, just because it's fun. In why did this card have to show up, aka the Razzie Award, we have the Tarot of the Animal Lords. <laughs> In hmm, why do I have this deck again? We have the Animism Tarot, the Mibromeg Magical Tarot, and the Wild Whiskers Oracle. In well, they can't all be winners. We have the Animal and Food Tarot, the Brady Tarot, the Northern Animal Tarot, the Tarot Cats. And the Witchy Cat Tarot. In Solid, Stunning, Handsome, we have the Animalis Os Fortuna Tarot. We have the Bohemian Animal Tarot. The Creature Secrets Animal Divination Cards. The New Zealand Naturally Tarot. The Oak Ash and Thorn Tarot. And the Tarot of the Pagan Cats. And in the Holy Fuck Hot Damn category... We have Blind the Sun Tarot, we have the Heart Spun Tarot, we have the Howl Tarot, and the Returning of Panthera Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> this was so much fun, and I'm really kind of surprised because I kind of expected that, like, Witchy Cat would be in a holy fuck hot damn, and I totally expected that the uh, Animism Tarot would be in in Solid Stunning or Holy Fuck, but, you know... That's why this is really fun to do this with random card draws is because you realize like, well, you know, if I'm judging the entire deck based on one card, then things are going to turn out a little differently than I expected. Um, I would love to do this again with another category of my decks, although I'll probably pick a smaller category, which should be very easy for me because this is by far the largest of my categories. <laughs> if you've stuck around this long, thanks very much. I hope you've enjoyed and um, if you want to do your own one, then I would encourage you to do so. Don't feel obligated to use this tier list maker um, 
tool. Like you can just you can just put them in uh, five different piles or however my however many piles you want to do uh, tier rankings. Um, anyway, thanks so much, and I will see you later. Bye.